Despite what many viewers may like to believe, my point is not to imply that all black people are working to destroy the country. I mean, we all agree that there are black people who are competent. In fact, there are many black people who are working to end the nonsense of the comrades. These black people are seeking the end of corruption, negligence, and incompetence of the comrades. That is a fact. But what's also a fact is that the vast majority of black people in this country are actually standing up in support of the bad black people among us. Welcome to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. I'm Katlero and would appreciate it if you subscribed to our YouTube channel, liked and shared this video with other citizens. There seems to be a black culture that exists across the globe. A culture of trying to band together with people with the same color as us. That is why you see that when the GNU was announced, the main complaints from many of these so-called progressive parties was that the ANC was working with white people. They didn't care whether the GNU would create wealth, jobs, peace or security for South Africans. Nope. Simply choose to work with a white person over a black person and they freak out. It is strange. Those kinds of people want us to believe that all black people believe in the same ideas as if all black people are one family or one country. You saw this with the Chidima issue. They wanted us to ignore it. Why? Because she is black. When black criminals in America get what they deserve, you hear the cries, black lives matter. But did they commit the crimes they are accused of? That doesn't matter. Black lives matter. They are black people who will vote black no matter what. They don't care about the consequences. If we have two politicians in front of us, a black one versus a white one, they will vote for the black one. Why? because it is a black politician. Tonight, where an investigation into Mayor Tiffany Henyard's administrations revealed more examples of taxpayer money used for questionable purposes. Our investigations have documented well over $100,000 in first class travel, meals, even donations to Henyard's questionable cancer charity. But that money came from Thornton Township, where Henyard is the supervisor. The investigation found this small south suburb went from a surplus two years ago to a nearly five and a half million dollar deficit today. Hey, but that black guy's corrupt. Yeah, but he's black. He's black. Three Amazon purchases in a single day, totaling more than $43,000. An unexplained Wayfair purchase of $7,699. PayPal money transfers and gift cards all charged to the village. I am in the White House. <laughs> Lightfoot also noted Henyard's well-documented taste for travel, paid for by both the village and the township. Henyard's former chief of staff in Dalton told us last January the mayor spent taxpayer money freely. Over-the-top meals, lobster, you know, crab legs. She liked the good stuff. And when, when you were with her at these meals, was government business discussed? No. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. Yeah, but he's stealing from you and I. Yeah, but he's black. No matter what, they vote black. They make it seem like choosing a white candidate is somehow selling out your country or your family or your whatever. The stupidity of it is so scary that every time I hear it, I am amazed by it. In America, there are communities that have experienced exactly this phenomenon. A city has more black people living in it. Just like South Africa, there are more black people living here, right? And the fact that there are more black people in those places has resulted in black people simply choosing to vote for black people for no other reason than the fact that their choice is black. And when I look at the situation and everything that's going on, I, I, I can just honestly say I'm just so disgusted with what is going on in this village. And I want to encourage the voters because I've come to the point that I don't just vote because you're just black. We have to start doing our due diligence and start researching the people that we actually cast our votes for. We can no longer just take handouts and because you're my favorite or because I like you, we have to literally start doing our research. And for those of you that voted for Tiffany, I'm just going to honestly say it, you might not like me, you just didn't do your research. 
I mean, you can honestly look at this chick and see that there was an issue and that there was a problem. I mean, when you do your research, you see, I mean, if you got a person with a criminal background, who in their right mind would have put her in position? So I say to you all, do your due diligence and just stop voting for people because they're black. We have to do our research. And if a lot of you all had done your research, a lot of this stuff would have been avoided. That's all I'm going to have to say. America is similar to South Africa in this aspect. No matter what, there are people who will vote black no matter how bad the black politician may be performing. So when people start saying, let's leave these black people alone in their dirt-filled, swampy living conditions, why do you get surprised? Wealthy white Louisiana residents split from Baton Rouge to form their own city. But is race a real issue at the core of this municipal secession? The 86,000 residents who are forming their own city in St. George, Louisiana, say it's about better schools for their children and better city services. Baton Rouge is more than 50% black. And those who are against a split say the city will be hurt by this action to create a new city, which was approved by the Louisiana State Supreme Court last Friday after a five-year-long battle. In Louisiana, the state Supreme Court there is allowing a largely white community to break apart and separate from the city of Baton Rouge to create their own city. What was interesting here, you also mentioned that you have a black mayor in Baton Rouge, and it's not like, yeah, Baton Rouge ain't Atlanta. It's not like there have been black mayors for the last 30 plus years. No, she is the second black mayor of uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, Kip Holden was the first black mayor of Baton Rouge. He was elected in 2004, took office in 2005. So when you put that into perspective, black folks have only been in leadership in this city for under 20 years, okay? So... It is crazy that we vote for lazy, corrupt people who have destroyed everything, and yet for some reason, we expect life to get better for us under those same people. Barely any of this was abandoned when we was kids. When we was young coming up, man, everything was open up here. Everything open. was live. All these stores and shit you see that's closed down, that was open. Oh, open. This, uh, get, get down here, you see that okay. brick building? That's a barber shop. They had the barber shop over across the street. You got two, three stone corner stores. You got Jamaica man. All oh, this kind of newer. These was the projects. They rebuilt them and turned them. They to turned it to like the alumni center. They used to be McKinley Middle. They burnt that down. Some of the kids burnt that down with some fireworks. There ain't really nothing for the youth to do. It's really pushing the youth to the streets at this point because everything gone. It's like we ain't really got too many eateries that's black owned down here. Everything that's black owned, they really didn't let go or even burn down or beef and caused to get closed down, all these shootings and, and, and you know, shit like that. And the young people that came and tried to catch up with it either went to jail or people getting killed off. We are not participating enough in our political landscape. We are not discussing these issues with each other. We are not educating our children. We make no time to talk about the economy, about skills, about talents, about our communities with our peers and with our children. How do you expect them and us to change our way of thinking if we don't do that? So when they are old enough to vote, they choose to vote for politicians like these ones. I mean, look at this mayor. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. She has destroyed her own city, but the majority of black people in that city chose to vote for her. Why? Because she's black. She wastes taxpayer money, and whenever she gets asked about her poor performance, do you know what she says? You're attacking me because I am black. And she's not the only one. I don't get it, but it happens every time. The fact that someone is black does not mean that the person is good for you. Because I've come to the point that I don't just vote because you're just black. We have to start doing our due diligence and start researching the people that we actually cast our votes for. And for those of you that voted for Tiffany, I'm just going to honestly say it. You might not like me. You just didn't do your research. The fact that a politician comes from Limpopo does not mean that you, a person from Limpopo, should vote for that person. For some reason, this is still a problem that is very, very active among black people. And to those who are being offended by this, this is an opportunity to pause and evaluate yourself and black people you know.
Don't focus on how this makes you feel. Focus on whether it is true or false. And if it is true, work with me to change this culture. Facts first, cry later. Did you notice that even though the ANC lost the 2024 elections, the voters still went to choose the parties that are just as bad or even worse than the ANC itself? In fact, the voters chose people who were formerly ANC. They are known to be very corrupt and yet our people keep choosing them. How does that make any sense to you? So since most black people choose black incompetence over competence, since most black people choose racism over competence, since most black people choose black people over good service delivery, over clean cities, over closed borders, what is happening? White people who can and who lack the patience for it are choosing to white flight. <laughs> they simply choosing to live abroad or they choosing to create their little closed cities or closed communities. Some want Orania while others want Cape Exit. I also do not like these ideas. I say let's all fix the country together. Let's educate those who are voting wrong. Let's show them the light. But if white people see that more than 60% of the population voted for racist, incompetent, corrupt parties that have created more racial division, poverty and crime, you understand why they want to live far away from people that keep thinking and voting like that. I was speaking with a black business person who said he supported Cape Exit and was thinking of even leaving South Africa due to being discouraged by the thinking and voting choices of the majority of South Africans. So you see, it's not just white people. It is not that white people are better human beings. It is not that white people are superior, but it is because the majority of white people in South Africa have embraced a culture of logic, common sense, and accountability. Black people who have embraced a culture of logic, common sense, and accountability are called names. Black people who want this are hated and being called sellouts. They are the minority, so they are treated funny and they cannot voice their concerns freely because Zuma, Malema, and the rest of the corrupt hyenas are viewed as heroes by the vast majority of black people in South Africa. You know what though? We can change that. We can definitely change that. The culture is a problem and we can change it. It is up to us. I will not rest until we do that. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and share the video with other people. I'm Katlero. This is Citizen Concerned. And until next time, beware of the comrades.